Right. But I got home that night, and there were uh, Dale Jr. fans waiting in my driveway. Yeah, they were waiting what in my house. What were they going to do? They just there to taunt you. They were waiting in my driveway uh, for me to get home so that they could yell at me. And That's I was right. just, I just Damn. waved and showed them the trophy and drove in my gate. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Kevin Harvick's Happy Hour, presented by NASCAR on Fox. I'm Kevin Harvick. This is Caitlin Bensey, Mamba Smith. We're here to break down everything that happened this weekend. My goodness. Yes. We this, better get started quick. This is a layup for the storylines after that race in Richmond, no question. Wild. Very wild. wild. Uh, and we appreciate everyone who's been tuning in and listening throughout the course of the season. Make sure you still subscribe to us on YouTube. Leave a five-star review for the show as well. And Keep watching, right, Mama? Yeah, and appreciate y'all on socials. Make sure you keep hitting that follow button. It's Harvick. Ha oh, this is a mouthful. Harvick Happy Pod. <laughs> um, sound Twitter. like me now. Yeah, <laughs> on Twitter. I'm like, oh, my X, goodness. On X. Twitter, X, YouTube, Facebook. Oh, Twitter right. and X. Instagram, yeah. all the good stuff. Now you can pull the rookie stripe off. Yeah. There you go. Doing oh, that for it the is first a lot time. to say. Yeah. yeah, I was like, Tyler, oh. our producer, wasn't kidding. Yeah, kidding. because, well, in my brain, I always say Kevin Harvick's happy. Which is a very small space. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> See it, dude? So you Shots were fired. You were just, you, you were slow to react on that one. I know, but I, you know, I, you got me. I got you. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. We get okay. Speaking of getting, what? You got, first off, the word of the week. I he know. was worried about it. I, was. Was I almost didn't catch it. It was that smooth. But it was, really? Yeah, it was good. It was good. It, well, I was really nervous because I, <laughs> I just didn't want to use it in the wrong context. And I just, um, it was hard to fit in with something that we were talking about. And if you didn't take advantage of a moment, uh -huh. like the green flag yeah. right off the bat, <laughs> and uh, somebody sailing it into turn one and, and making it happen with no idea of how much grip level there was it was going to be hard to get in because there was only going to be certain moments that you could use the phrase. Yeah, well, so. let's, let's, let's hear the phrase, roll the tape. I look at that and I, I see Kyle Larson and Cliff Daniels and, and his team have done a great job with rain tires and slick tires and keeping that car up front and qualifying on a pole and Kyle Larson, yeah, he's him. <laughs> it was, it was just so, so like, yeah. yeah, he's him. And what like, does that mean, though, for people who may not know? Yeah, he's what him. What does that phrase You're mean? the like, dude. You're, you're the, the guy. guy. You're, you're, you're the guy. Are, you you're are the guy. that person. There you go. If anyone didn't know, that was great. That might have been the best one all year. It was definitely smooth, but I was I was nervous. I kept telling Clint, I'm like, man, I don't, I don't know when I'm going to use this. Yeah, that's funny. And he kept laughing at me. <laughs> and, the, and the more I act like I'm worried about something, the more Clint eggs it on. Feeds so, into it. And, and, Every time we had a conversation, man, I hope you use that word correctly. <laughs> hope you use that phrase correctly. Oh, oh, it's taken goodness. on a whole life of its own for it sure. Has. And so did the bet between the two of you, which was easily won through. within like an hour. We knew you were wearing the suit. Yeah. Just to be clear, I had bought the bunny suit before we had even, as soon as we left the studio and he yes. made the bet, I bought the bunny suit. And say what your wife did, because that was really funny. Which part? When she saw the order come through oh. on Amazon. <laughs> oh, I had just told I had just told them, I said, it's going to be a few minutes and my wife's going to call me wondering what, what? the hell I just bought on, on Amazon and how long was it? Like two oh, minutes. Like it was, I mean, yeah. it was very quick. And I answered the phone. She's like, what in the hell are you buying a bunny suit for? <laughs> and then it went into how bad the bunny suit was and, and it should have bought a drowsy. different one. And it's like eyes, it was it on sale like for was, $36. Yeah, no, it's and perfect. it served its purpose and you wore it. And oh, here, here it, is. Are, it is. Like, obviously, um, rocking the suit, driver yeah, He's intros. rocking it. Did, <laughs> yeah. Was that thing hot? Yeah. I, so Looks everyone, like you swelled up in it a little yeah, bit. Well, you know, what everyone doesn't realize, <laughs> this is me and Kyle Larson. So Kyle also in this <laughs> He's picture, so happy. He couldn't see. Like, because it was so humid and all the rain, the fog oh. machine was keeping the fog, the smoke in. So I had to, like, walk him out so he could see where he was going. But, I mean, look, man. Uh, I pulled it off, but you what did everyone great. didn't know is I wore that all day. Like, I got to the oh. racetrack at nine. Oh, yeah? Like, I never took it off. I didn't realize you wore it all day. I wore it at the airport. <laughs> I, my you wore at, that at the airport? My flight was at 823. Oh so oh. the minute I was done with intros, I went to the airport. I didn't have time. What did they think about you in the security they line at the airport? just kind of like, and I made sure to keep it up. And everyone's like, just looking at me really, yeah. really funny. Strange. I wore, I was it. I got upgraded. So I was in first class. They probably were like, first. put this crazy ass dude yeah. in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, times. you really did take one for the team wearing that thing the whole day and on your flight. I'm proud of you. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah. so what do you think the bet should have been? So now knowing what I know now and, and. You know the homies, they they messed up because you guys kept retweeting. The so now, yeah. the, 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 they now I know 
that you guys are paying attention. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the next one is going to be a lot a more. Higher. Yeah. Stakes higher. are going to be. If I would have known what I know now, I would have done at least twelve hundred. As after in in um, I guess with your bunny suit and everything that that you were doing, we had <laughs> the fox group had a happy bunny with a head, oh. whole suit, feet, hands, everything, and they brought it over. And Keelan had it on in the TV compound the that. the whole morning. And Michael Waltrip was like, "Hey." We're going to go do pre-race, and you can just follow me around as, at, as the bunny. And at, at the end, we're going to take your head off, and we're going to reveal who was the Easter bunny all day on pit road. So um, that was that was the start of it right there with with uh, Keelan the has the head yeah. on. There, there Keelan's, yeah, in, Keelan with, Keelan's yeah. in the sad bunny suit I at, asked at Keelan, home. I asked him, I said, am I going to look good in it? He, but, he goes, no. He's oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so on for the YouTube or for our audio followers, this is a video of Keelan. Look at that saggy Race content. morning in the TV compound. <laughs> Walking through we, the we got thing. We got to the TV compound at like 11 o'clock because I was bored. And Keelan stayed with me. We raced at Old Dom or at Dominion Speedway yep, okay. um, the, the night before. So he stayed with me. And uh, we were roaming through the TV compound because he'd never been there. So I took him through all the trailers. Everything was open and nobody was there. Well, first thing, they brought the bunny suit in. So we're walking around. <laughs> and and before you knew it, he was in the makeup room. I'm not going out there. I, I'm, I'm not. I just can't do it. They'll hold that against me forever. If that's on TV, uh, they'll, they'll, always, oh. they'll always have it. So. Okay, so that was Keelan's reaction to the suit. Your uh -huh. daughter, Piper, also had a reaction to your suit. Yeah. Mm -mm. Take a look at this. I love Pipe. Piper, did Mr. Dillon do a good job? Yes, but I think Daddy should have done a better job getting a little happier bunny suit. Don't you agree? I agree. I also agree. Did you put her up to that? <laughs> I didn't. I, I just texted Delaney. I said, hey, ask Piper if she thought I did a good job. She did that all on her own. I was looking for a bargain. Apparently, apparently nobody likes sad bunny suits. <laughs> sad bunnies. It was the saddest little bunny. I love it's you, okay. Piper. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, bet paid off. Very entertaining. The weekend was very entertaining. I know from your vantage point. Let's just start with the variables going into this race, with the weather and the tires and everything going on. What would you think? I thought... I thought it was great. <laughs> I, I thought, um, you know, when we were in the garage and they were putting the wet weather tires on, we were doing a pre-race show and I'm thinking to myself, oh yeah, we are, we are in for a treat at the start of this race and we're, we're going to go. They waited about 15 or 20 minutes because it was raining. NASCAR is still a little bit tentative, making sure that everybody's safe and it's going to be okay. And that, especially with a points race at North Wilkesboro, when we did this the first time in the heat races, there wasn't any points on the line. Um, if something went wrong, it was a great time to learn. Uh, but this is a points race, and they were still a little bit tentative. I, I think that the spray wasn't as much as as we all thought it would be. Yeah. I think that the cars handled really well um, it, with, the, with the wet weather tires on. And I think next time, we probably could have started that race on time, uh, because, even with the, the light rain that was, that was coming down and, and been just fine because the cars, they look great. They dropped the green flag, and they were from the, from the yellow line all the way to the wall. Um, and... Everybody thought that the cars drove well. So I um, kudos to NASCAR for for dropping the green flag. And and I, I think that probably saved us probably an hour, hour and a half. Huge. It so is, it's a yeah. that's a big deal when when you have fans in the stands and people watching on home to get the race started on time. I think um, you know, if the, if they had started in the pit stalls on pit road with the downdraft, uh, drying the pit stalls themselves would have would have really helped the process. And I think um, the only adjustment that I would make is probably when you go from wet tires to slick tires, having a single file restart. Because when you go from wets to slicks, that one lane is the only thing that is dry. Yep. And then you don't have to run those double file caution laps and take a chance of, of that second lane not being as dry as possible. I think you might, if you had a single file restart after you go to the slick tires, uh, I think that that puts everybody in a little better position and it doesn't have to be as dry. Yeah. What'd you think about it going it, into just watching, like wondering how this is going to unfold? Yeah, no, it was it was awesome. I was like, so I'm like I said, I was at the airport and I'm I'm packing, and this lady I was getting my rental car. She's like, "Were you at the racetrack?" I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, "Man, they're not going to get this thing in at training." I'm like, "Ma'am, you do not know new NASCAR. We are we are <laughs> going to be getting after it here in like 20 minutes." Um, and I was stoked, right? Like having the rain tires to get an event going. So at least bare minimum, we can get it to halfway. And then we end up getting the whole thing in. Because to your point, if we wait another hour, 
Like that race ain't mm-hmm. getting over time. Right. What, like almost midnight? Yeah, it was already late. Yes. So that that made a huge difference. And I agree with you. I think now that we know kind of what it does, we can start on pit road. And then yeah. the cars kind of dry up the racetrack. Yeah, because I think that I think the pit boxes are the main thing to have dry. Yeah. I think you need to blow the standing water off of pit road. But I think you have to start with the pit stalls to get the teams a head start to get their boxes dry. And I think we can get to competitive pit stops a little faster because really the reason that we don't have uh, competitive pit stops is you don't want the cars sliding through the pit boxes into a car that's having a pit stop. So there is a a real safety concern there, but I don't think coming in on rain tires with your pit box dry and all the standing water off of, off of pit road, I think you could go right to competitive pit stops, have a single file restart and everything, everything be fine. So, um, and I think back and I'm, I, I, I think back to some of those races, we used to have to have every inch of that racetrack dry, all of it. every inch of pit mm-hmm. road dry. When we got done with the race, the racetrack still wasn't dry right. <laughs> in, yeah. in the top groove and, and on pit road, and everything was was fine. And the cars actually have more grip than you think they do, even when the asphalt is not, it looks discolored. It's got a lot more grip than, than you think it would. So listening to you guys talk reminded me of a quote I heard from Booty Barker, crew chief, obviously, for, for Bubba. When we go to Slicks, it's a massive change. You're going to think something's broken until you settle back in. Can you explain what like what that means, the change and how yeah. it feels for the driver. So first off, the, the rain tires have no stagger. So there's about an inch and an eighth or an inch and a quarter of stagger in the in the slick tires, which means the right side tires are bigger than the left side tires. The rain tires have zero. So it's the same tires on on both sides. So they, they had impound adjustments, which uh, allowed the teams on those non-competitive stops and before the race to be able to adjust their cars to what they thought their balance needed to be on the rain tires. Um... But I, I think that the, the the biggest thing about the about the tires and and everything that that comes with the rain is is just getting the balance right, understanding that we probably could have gone we probably could have gone forty laps, I'd say, uh, on the rain tires, maybe forty five. I think yeah. we could have gone a, a further distance uh, on those rain tires. So, um, so anyway, I, I think it's. Um, you know, the, the process went really good. I kind of lost my train of thought here as to where I was going with this. <laughs> so go ahead and go ahead and fix this for me. Yeah, before. no, I got you. I think what you were trying to say is it's a completely different feel in the, in that's the car. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. Completely I'm getting old. Feel. Yeah. I so, saw you, he's so, over here looking at his, yeah. I'm like, I, well, I started going through plane? my, I started going through my list here and I got, I got lost in my train of thought. <laughs> you can't um, read those chicken scratches over there. Back to Caitlin's, <laughs> back to Caitlin's question. Um, <laughs> the tires definitely feel different. The rain tires move around more okay. in the back. And they, a lot of that comes from just the the tread and the way that the tread moves, which is why we went to more tread on the tires to put heat in the tire. And it, the drivers felt like it gave the car more feel and, and you had more feel on the tire. So that, that actually came from the rain tires at North Wilkesboro. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and when the rain tires start to wear out, they feel like with the old car, you felt like track bars broke, but with, with this car, it just the, the back of the car, the whole car just starts to feel a little bit more yawed out in the way that it turns. And then you put those slick tires on, it feels like you put bricks on, back on the car. Okay. See, I was yeah. wondering what the difference is. Yeah. Were. So just the, the feel of the car goes from really soft and mushy to, to <laughs> stiff and rigid. And it's a it's a big it's a big adjustment for the drivers to to have to go from from one tire to the other. The racing when they went back to green with Bubba and Larson on the front row, when they switched the tires, was I was like, these boys are about to wad them all up because yeah. the the like the patch that you need to be on is very it's a very fine line because the groove hadn't really widened out yet, and because of that, Bubba was leaning hard on Larson. Well, if Larson drives in there just a little too deep or catches a patch on the bottom, they're all washing up the hill and wrecking. So, like, yeah. they were – these are some of the best drivers in the world, without a doubt. Yeah. Well, that outside lane, that's that's one reason when I was talking about just going single file because you could spread that groove out naturally. Yeah. That, that gave us some some great moments right there on the restart. And Bubba knew that that, that second groove was – it was dry, but it wasn't, it didn't look dry. <laughs> no, it didn't look dry. It was shiny. And, and so he, like you say, he was literally against Kyle Larson's door trying to, trying to keep him pinned down. And that's, that's what he had to do. So, um, I, I like everything that we did. I think that that natural evolution of when do we put reins on or slicks on after the first time NASCAR's kind of taken that into a safety uh, measure and and to the process is to get the track dry, yep. uh, not come on pit road the first time. But I think after that, you got to kind of just let it go and and see see where it all goes. Because the one of the things that made it 
the most intriguing was the racetrack drying and evolving and whose cars were good and whose cars were bad kind of changed through that whole first part of that race because of the fact that the track was rubbering back up. It was drying. There were a lot of things that were, that were coming into play that just took a little bit longer into the race than, than if we'd have just started on a, on a dry track. Yeah. Race. And if you want to be a little more ballsy with the wet weather radials, yeah. You could do that and probably make up some time. If you knew that, like, man, we might not have as good of a car, but let me get some track position and maybe we can play this game. That, that and we saw that a little effect. bit because the, the the one line was dry, but when you had yeah. to start making passes on the entry, the, the bottoms of the straightaway were the, you had to go into the damper part of the racetrack in order to put yourself in a position to pass. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it was, I think everybody was learning. NASCAR learned, the drivers learned, and and I think we can definitely do it we will do it better the next time, but from where we were at North Wilkesboro to where we were at Richmond in an actual points race was a great step. So the weather, the tires, obviously a big part of the conversation around this race. So too was the restart at the end. Denny Hamill, mm. we've gone this long and ha haven't mentioned yet that he won the race, <laughs> yeah. by the way. What did you think about how this race closed out and what you saw with the restart? Uh, well, that's a loaded <laughs> question. Yeah. Um, when, when we first showed the replay, at the at the at the end of the race, um, everything happened, and it was hard to tell who went where. We showed the replay, and, and I said, you know, definitely looked like he rolled before the line. Mm -hmm. Well, when you go back today, he definitely went way before the line <laughs> and took off. And so, I think from a driver's perspective, and and everything that you do, you know, at the end of the race that they aren't gonna. There, it's going to have to be pretty blatant for them to call that restart violation. And as a driver, you know you want to go as early in the process as possible to take off so that you get the advantage on, on the outside guy. You don't want to wait in the, in the box. You, you want to go at the very beginning of the box to be able to, to take off. So uh, Denny, you know, he took off early, uh, got away with it, and, and won the race. And, and I think on the flip side, uh, Martin lost the race. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he flipped out. Yeah, uh, after the race. And, yeah. and so uh, he had a bad pit stop. His pit stop was one second slower than 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 Denny Hamlin's, and um, lost the lead, lost control of the race. And then Denny snookered him on the last start. Whether he's going to go at the line or before the line, you got to be ready, knowing that 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 you can go. He's going to go at some point. You got to you got to fire with him. And he was obviously not ready to go when Denny went went a little bit early. We were seeing the pit stops there. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously Denny Hamlin's really rose to the occasion in that clutch moment, which we've seen them do a lot of times in the past. Yeah, I mean that was a. I mean he gave the credit to his team. He's like that yeah. was a team win. Like them boys got it done. And I, I think when the pit crew gets it done like that. Um, it reminds everybody how important they, they are, yeah, yeah. right? So the, kudos to those guys. Uh, the restart, man, <laughs> like, he, I, he definitely jumped, right, without a doubt. But here's what I'll say. A lot of people are like, oh, that, that we should have given him a penalty, this, that, and the other. Like, he jumped it, yeah. But, like, do you really want, do you really want NASCAR to be in here, like, judging every little thing like like where are you at with that because i like <laughs> his eyebrows is that yeah like, you know, he gave go. the double eyebrows <laughs> like do you want him to be all the way to the book all the time or do you want you guys to be able to fight it out like it's not you know where you at well i'm at i'm at if you're gonna paint a line on the track you should you should use the line i mean if you're if your football team steps on the line you're out of bounds right yeah well if the ball doesn't cross the plane is it a touchdown? True. And I think if if you're going to paint a line on a racetrack to to officiate a situation, yeah, none of us want NASCAR involved in it. But NASCAR wouldn't even have to be involved in it. Put a speed line there, just like they do on pit road. Make the make the speed entering the box x amount. Give them five miles an hour, whatever the pace car speed is, plus five miles an hour, and you're. Put a, put a line across the racetrack. And, and if you're faster than that with the length of the car, that would be the nose at the, at the, at the, at the line of the restart zone. It's a, it's a, the computer can call the penalty at that particular right. point. So I'm all for leaving NASCAR out of it. But uh, as a driver, we know, right. we know that we put them in a really tough position. If you go a half a car length before the restart zone at the end of the race, Denny Hamlin knew that. He knows that. Every driver in the field knows that. NASCAR doesn't want to be in the position to have to make that call. I, my, my opinion is take yourself out of that position yeah. to, to make that call. And 
you know, just, you know, you, you have a, you have a, a speed that, that enters the box and then you, then, it, then it is what it is. And it's going to police itself at that particular point. So uh, you look, I, I don't want NASCAR in the middle mm-hmm. of any more than, and they don't want to be in the middle of any more Heck than no. what they, they are in. But as a driver, I know right now that if I go a little bit before that line, it's not going to get called on the last restart because they don't want to affect the outcome of the race. So it's a, it's a really tough position to be in. Um, but I'm a firm believer that if you're going to paint something to officiate the race on and you're going to put them in that box, it doesn't put the leader at any, any less disadvantage. But right now you could argue that it put the leader, uh, in a, it put the second place guy at a huge disadvantage because the leader wasn't using the regulated box. So, so, so let me ask you this, cause it ri- reminds me a little bit of Briscoe and Denny at Indy when they got into it and then Briscoe was actually being penalized, but he really like, kept racing with Denny and kind of like took the way. So he gets penalized, right? It takes him a lap to decide if there's a penalty. They call it in. A lot of the drive, like when they get penalized, they keep running for like three laps, but this is like a green white checker. So now Denny's penalized, not there. Martin's there and they keep racing. Like, I just don't, I don't know. It's, it's a recipe for a complete disaster because no one's going to stop. Yeah. But now this guy that's penalized that jumped the restart is in the way of the actual second place guy that's trying to, it's like, a, it's a it's new, not good. It's a new list of rules. <laughs> it's not good. Um, and there's no good answer to it. Um, that would be my opinion yeah. of what it should be on every restart because it's more than just the last restart. Yeah. Right. And if you're, in, if you're in a scenario where it's a, where it's a green, white, checker type situation i don't know maybe maybe you have to call it off laps don't matter at that point anyway but then you get into fuel mileage and strategies and <laughs> so i i don't know where that stops but i know if if um if you're going to put that line there and it's going to be hey we can go a little bit before the box because now what'll happen is nascar is going to call it for, for several the weeks they're going to call laying back they're going to call going early in the box but nobody went early in the box you know that as a driver you don't go early in the box until the last restart of the race and that's just the way that it works. Uh, you know you're going to get away with that. So Martin Truex Jr. was very frustrated. Pretty unusual behavior, I guess you could say, uncharacteristic of him after the race. I know you noticed some footage of him, too, from the booth on an ISO camera of MTJ yes. walking after the race. What do you yeah. think about this whole reaction to to the, the outcome of the race? Well, he's frustrated, and, and I— I've, I've been in that position and, and been frustrated too. And, and, you know, I think as you see this footage with Martin and, and Joe Gibbs right here and, and just the, just the fact that, uh, I don't know what was said to Joe right there, but you can see by his, his, um, girlfriend's reaction right there. And, um, he must've obviously said something that was, that was, that was pretty much, um, not, not what she would have said, but, um, I don't know. It, Every time I was in this position, and I, I, I don't want to judge somebody else's position on, on where they're at and what they're doing, I, like to, I would judge it on how I was in, in those positions. But to me, it seems like a lot of those things happen when there's some internal frustrations or you're dealing with something that's frustrating you and it finally gets to a boiling point, and man, did it boil. It went from, it went from getting beat on the restart to getting used up by by the 11 car, which I don't think he used him up. I think he was racing at the end. Of, he left him a lane uh, coming off turn two. Yeah, he came up the racetrack, but we're racing for the win. Um, you know, to just getting in a war with Kyle Larson. Right. Uh, smashing <laughs> so into the crazy. side of him off of turn two, smashing him into the fence down the front straightaway, <laughs> um, and then slamming into the back of, of uh, Denny Hamlin's car uh, several times. Uh, and when you go back and watch that footage, I mean, it is with a lot of throttle. And then we come on pit road and, and blow off your owner. So I think a lot of that, it seems like there's more to it than just that last yes. moment yes. on the restart um, and getting beat, beat off of pit road with some of the members that used to be on your pit crew. Yeah. I wonder how that team meeting's been this week. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what do you think? Uh, I think, <laughs> I think the team meeting was interesting if you you're the 54 <laughs> team or the 20, cause you're just sitting back and watching the whole thing. Like that's yeah. fun. But like, I, I, so me and Caitlin were texting during the race about it and she's like, Oh, I think he's going to be good. I'm like, I feel like this is, he's going to, they're going to lose it. Like they were dominating. Mm-hmm. And as of late, he called it when they dominate races, they don't, Close it doesn't the close. They don't close it. Now I thought the five was going to get him, not the eleven. Um, but I think it's weird when you're racing teammates like that. Like I think at the end of the race, team orders have to be 
off. Like you, as you're as a driver, you cannot expect your teammate to give you any room, really, especially the 11, I feel like. Well, think back. I mean, Joe Gibbs has been in this position before. I mean, uh, Carl Edwards knocked Kyle Busch out of yeah. the way coming to the checkered flag several years ago. Um, it's, a tough, it's a tough dynamic and a tough situation to handle. But uh, in the end, uh, there were a lot of things that just boiled over for, for Martin uh, at, at the end of that race that all – the real root of the problem was the one second slower pit stop. Yes. Hit road. So he went, he went from first to second. Um, he had complete control of that, that race dominated the race, put himself in position early in the race by, uh, you know, the exact opposite scenario. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's a situation to where I think Martin knows that, you know, is this his last year? Is it not his last year? I, I think if it, if it is his last year, uh, he's in a position to where I, I want to win and be able to go out on a, on a, on a high note. And, you know, I think that there's, there's obviously some internal frustrations probably with the reaction of, of the way that all happened, but between the teams and the drivers or somebody, because that's a, that was a pretty over the top reaction and they've been in this position and he knows they have the best cars right now. Yeah. And when you lose those races, you're frustrated as all get out. And he, um, you know, he, he lost the race and, it was a bad deal. That's the one. <laughs> Our the, pick. The, yeah. We yeah. both picked him. I was like, oh, so close. Yeah. But no Yeah, guys. I mean, he had control of the race. Yeah. And, yeah. and it just came down to the five getting spun out by the 23. Mm -hmm. And five got loose and 23 was, uh, there. was, was there and, and sent him spinning. And it actually worked out better for Kyle Larson. He actually <laughs> yeah. put himself with, in a, with a better finishing position than he did. Yeah, he was um, actually going backwards at that that's point. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So very crazy end of the race. Uh, a, a lot to digest. And, and going back to the whole... Truex situation. I, I don't even really know. I don't know what the answer is. I but I can tell you there's frustration there uh, that that we don't know about. Can we yeah, talk about real quick true. how cool Kyle Larson is? Always. Like like That's steady Eddie. After yeah after the th <laughs> after the, all the stuff he's just like <laughs> well, yeah I mean he hit me and I was like but he well, he made a point to say how res respectful Martin typically races and yeah. he was trying to say I think in, in Away, like and that's how I would him. describe it too. Yeah, yeah. Martin is is always respectful about everything, and this is, and the, this is the the incident that we we're talking about with with Kyle getting loose and Bubba in the gas and see the flames out of out of Bubba's pipes uh, to to let off once he realized that he was going to get into the back of the five. But this scenario is is what caused the the last caution, um, and actually, you know, Kyle Kyle Larson, I, I think he came out of the pits in sixth. After he spun out sitting on the bottom of the straightaway, which shows you how far ahead they yeah. they actually were. And Bubba, his night kind of unraveled uh, mm -hmm. on this pit stop as they as they left the <sighs> the wheel loose. He had to stop and back up and and wound up uh, coming out of the pits. I think sixteenth and finished thirteenth. Yeah. So that was tough. Um, a lot at the beginning of this race, a lot at the end of this race. We had a lot of strategy in the middle of the race with the way that the lap times were. There were. A uh, couple guys that that uh, tried to stay out and run the whole stint mm -hmm. or split the stint in half, um, and then we saw at the end with uh, Christopher Bell um, and Denny, they kind of waited to try to have some fresher tires to make passes easier as as the tires fell off. So there was a lot in the middle that played out, and and sometimes Richmond can be a little bit less action than than a lot of other places. But yeah. man, we were loaded up with action. This we, time. we certainly were. So some people frustrated, others happy. One of them being Joey Logano. We've been talking about <laughs> Joey Logano. We uh Kev, we got top five. Yeah, Kev, we took we gotta we gotta address that a little bit. We we kind of took an L a little bit because we last week we were kind of, you know, jamming on the on the Fords a little bit. Yeah. And they they actually performed <laughs> like throughout the entire race. At one point, there was like four or five of them in the top ten. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so so kind of give them a little. I, well, let's expand a little bit on that Ford <laughs> comment then, because right. I expected more out of the RFK cars. I, I know that they yes. were. I know that they were in the top ten, but I expected them to be um, like as much better as Joey Logano was if they were going to be in the mix. Because I felt like with with Chris uh, Busher winning there last year, and as well as Brad ran. I expected them to race around the top five. Never, never saw that. Mm -hmm. Never saw them anywhere, anywhere close like to the seventh. top five. So, kind of average, mediocre, in my opinion, for RFK at, at Richmond. But Joey Logano, uh, they they talked about going to North Wilkesboro and uh, to the tire test up there and figuring out some things with their cars, and that definitely carried right over to Richmond. And and they really needed that. I mean, he's been consistent, been making up points, and putting himself in a better uh, points position, but. 
I mean, he was in contention to to race for the win, you know, with all that that shook out at the end of the race and and uh, didn't work out as as a W for him. But I mean, he was running second there with with a couple laps to go. I, I feel like uh, North Wilkesboro and Richmond at this point kind of race a little similarly. You wear your tires out pretty fast, and it's a short track, so it's managing all those things. Do you feel like that's a good measuring stick for either vice versa? You know what I mean? Well, we, we've we've got Bristol, we've got um, Martinsville, and we just had Richmond. So we've got a few short tracks right in a row. I think the other, to go back on the on the Ford piece of it, probably the best Ford was the four car of Josh Berry, and oh, they they guy. had they had a they had some <laughs> trouble on pit road with a with a bad pit stop, and then he missed pit road under coming to the green that put him back like twelfth, eleventh yep. or twelfth, and they worked their way back up. But he drove from like thirtieth all the way, mm-hmm. all the way back forward. So. It's um, yeah. I I think, I think with the short tracks all in a row like this, it really gives us a good read as to where everybody is. I think um, Martinsville is another uh, race that we can circle a couple cars. I think the fourteen car and the four car are in that, in those cars that are circled for Martinsville. Chase Briscoe has been extremely good there. So much like much like uh, Richmond was for Joey Logano and and the Roush cars. Um, I think Martinsville is that for those two Stuart Haas cars, or really all of them as well. Yeah, we'll talk plenty about Martinsville coming up, of course. Uh, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but we always do kind of talk about the teams that are still seemingly struggling. And mm-hmm. I go back to the Austins once again. It, it, what do you think is going on there, Kevin, with well, both of this Austin Cindric and Austin? Yeah, I, and uh, I just, I just, they don't have anything going for them right now. Um, you know, Austin Cindric qualified good this week, qualified good at Coda, uh, as well. Um, and really Austin Dillon hasn't done any of those things. It hasn't qualified good. Hasn't raced good. Uh, we see Kyle Bush has, has been struggling some of late too. So they're obviously looking for some, somewhere to go with, with their cars as to, as to a better direction. Kyle Bush started off really great, uh, but has, has been hit or miss the, the last several weeks. And, and Austin has been in that boat every week. So, you know, it's just been a, it's been a tough start. And, and I think both of them, they got to get something going pretty quick. And, and I, I think they're both in, in Hail Mary territory as far as their playoff hopes. And, and they, they need to win a race because they're, they're, um, they're way out of the, the points hunt. Yeah. I mean, looking at their finishes between the two Austins, uh, only one top 15 Ooh. finished between the two of them. Yeah. So they got it. They got, I think, 100% Hail Mary time. I think if you're Cindric, you feel a little bit better than if you're Austin Dillon because you're going to rely a little bit on your road course um, background. And there's some road courses before the playoffs, whereas Austin isn't as strong at those. And then you're also looking at your super speedways. So Tyler Day, you're coming Yeah, up. well, like, I mean, you got to throw it out. Everybody him. looks at, everybody's looking at, Talladega Mm -hmm. and Daytona. And these two guys are definitely on that list of knowing that we got to win one of those two races because they're not going to win anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. They've both won on a super speedway in the past. So uh, eventful weekend out in Richmond to say the least Uh, short track uh, coming up next for Martinsville place that you've won at in the past 2011. Yeah. In the well, Cup series. it was never my favorite place. It was never. I was uh, going to ask you that. I was yeah. curious if you liked it or not. We were usually on the struggle bus at Martinsville. Um, not our, truck, our truck stuff was our truck stuff was really good. But even when it was even when it was going good, <laughs> it always seemed like something went wrong. And for yeah. whatever reason, that place really from the when I, the time I got thrown out in in two thousand and two for for <laughs> spinning Coy Gibbs out under. Uh, retali- I guess under getting getting some retaliation, I, I got to spend the weekend at home eating hot dogs in the in the parking lot of my motorhome, watching the race <laughs> as, as, as a reward. Um, yeah, that's what we did. We we drove the motorhome home and we sat in the parking lot of the shop and we cooked hot dogs and and watched the race. That's awesome. Yeah, you're just trying to punish yourself with their, with the hot dogs or what? No, at that <laughs> time, that was like sign. preferred food and, preferred probably, food and probably all we could cook at, at, that, at, <laughs> at that particular point. Um, but our trucks were always fantastic there. Yeah. Um, we had some some great success in in the truck series and was always a great racetrack. But 2011 was was the only year that we ever put it together. I think um, two years ago in the in the Cup car we we had a great day, won some stages or won a stage and ran up in the front all day, had a chance to win. But I don't remember I don't remember having too many chances to win. We might have finished in the top five. I think I finished fourth or fifth there backwards one time. 
Yeah. Crashing. Yeah, wrecking. Um, but usually Unique. most of my highlights come from uh, scuffles or you some do sort have of, a few of those. Some sort of disagreement. Some sort of there. disagreement. Do we, do we have a scuffle from from Martinsville, Kevin? We do. No real scuffle, just oh. a just kind of a disagreement between some groups. Oh mm. okay. Ty Dillon in the truck series race in 2013 oh, is the, what we're speaking of. Oh, the the Thor hammer throw. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know, I think <laughs> At this particular moment, it's a lot like the Truex stuff that, that we're talking about. You just don't know what's going on internally. But I was leaving RCR, um, and so there was a lot of tension between everybody at RCR and myself at that particular point because everybody was mad that that we were leaving, and I didn't take a liking to uh, the three spinning me out. So I just held on as long as I felt like I could right there without getting beat up um, by the whole team. Uh, to keep, it, to keep him from making their pit stop, see him take <laughs> off right there. He was about to get lapped. And that was my whole goal was to make sure he didn't win. So okay. I was just going to hold him uh. in his pit stall as long as I could. But, um, yeah, I got a big sledgehammer thrown at me. You did? Yeah. Wow. I don't think I would have wanted to be on his bad side. Like if I was Kevin? Like, no. Heck no. no. Not as a racer. And if I couldn't beat you up, I was going to be somewhat vindictive. And right. Calculated. You're petty. Yeah, Very calculated. Calcul- petty. petty. Oh, jeez. Yeah. He called yeah. you petty. Petty shots. Petty. Yeah. Yeah. Petty shots. Well, you got to take them however you can get it. Look, Look. That, so. that, that specific video, I always laugh so hard at it. because Which part? The, the whole thing, really. Have you ever had a sledgehammer thrown at you? You didn't get it thrown at you. It was thrown at the truck. It didn't even make it <laughs> to the door. What, my net, window net was down. You I'm, couldn't I'm, even <laughs> see it. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> you didn't know it was coming. But, like, you just parked there. And I'm like, it was kind of like for you to park in the stall. That's it's, gangster of you. It is. That is. Look at the officials. The officials <laughs> don't know what to do. They're, like, trying to rip So I got him from this truck? <laughs> Just chaos down yeah. there. And all those least. guys hated me at that particular point. Oh. Because, Obviously. Yeah. I, I mean, there was just, you know, you're, you're leaving the team. They felt, yeah, felt, felt like you, mm. you shouldn't do that. And I felt like, you know what? I don't really care. I'm going to do as much damage <laughs> as I can it. right here. I'm going to make sure, <laughs> going out on sure high note. you're not winning going this race. High note. <laughs> so. I want to go back to the Cup Series one, though. 2011, because you passed Dale Jr. with four to go, and you said I, I was going to be the bad guy. Right? I was. Uh, I was the bad guy. I got, I actually, um, we crashed early in that race and knocked the back of the car off and came back through the field and, and wound up passing Dale with with a few laps, four laps to go uh, there at the end of the race. So it was, it was a fun, fun race with Dale. And anytime that you get the, the Earnhardt Jr. nation behind you uh, wanting to, be mad at you or whatever the scenario is and they at that point they were mad i didn't do anything wrong i just beat their guy right, right. but i got home that night and there were uh dale jr fans waiting in my driveway oh actually, what for me to go in my gate yeah they were waiting what were they house. gonna do they just there to taunt you <laughs> scream at you tell you that where were you living at the time how do people find out where drivers live i don't understand this yeah that is yeah. wild so they were they were waiting in my driveway uh, for me to get home so that they could yell at me. And That's I was fair. just, I just Dang. waved and showed him the trophy and drove in my gate. Speak, where is that trophy? Because you get a very cool trophy if you win at Martinsville. Yeah, it's a grandfather clock, clock. Where is it? So uh, we have a, a very organized household, thanks to my wife. Obviously. And apparently <laughs> the decor of the grandfather clock doesn't, doesn't match anything. Yeah. Uh, and so I the, get the that. argument with the grandfather clock was uh, well, I'm bringing the grandfather clock home. It's a marquee trophy in the in any series, but let alone the Cup Series. And I'm I knew I wasn't <laughs> probably ever going to win another one. <laughs> so I'm like I'm bringing this. I'm bringing the clock home. And I lost the battle. The clock now lives in the garage. Okay. So that's as okay. close. I, I but I refuse to. I refuse to take it out of the house. Okay, I was going to. It's say. not in the house. It's in the. It's in the man cave. I was so going to say I have a good. It's in the garage in the man cave. Okay. But I am nice. not. That is as far as it's going. It's not going into storage. I think it look good. Like we could put it on the set. Yeah, we can bring it here. I think it looked good. You want on the to? Set. Yeah. I mean, it's the it's, grandfather it's, clock. Gonna, it's never been put together, so oh. somebody's gonna have to put it together. Oh, all the wow. all the bells and and weights and everything are still in the in, in the, the package. <laughs> no, we're, no, we're definitely bringing it in here then. If it's okay. not even put together, it'll just yeah. start chiming yeah. though in the middle. Well, of the I mean, show. it's together, yeah. <laughs> but nothing. None of the chimes or anything have no, ever yeah. been put together. We so. need to put it. We need to bring it in here. Okay. That's a very deal. cool well, trophy. You just come pick it up and we'll bring it. Yeah, we'll put it in my little Scion two-door. Perfect. <laughs> there you go. Well, and to commemorate that win, I wore a jacket to, I love to it. rep Kevin today. I bought this off a of seller on Etsy. It was a couple hundred dollars. Really? It was. I mean, good things are high priced. And the guy didn't wash it. It was literally like, smelled like a racetrack still. So I had to wash it. I did okay. wash it. Uh, uh, yeah. 
definitely one up in you today, and I love I, it. I'm doing my best. It's really hard to one up him. Yeah, I mean, the bunny you're not going to get much credit unless you come up with a 29 or a four jacket. Maybe you can get one of those big Ooh. old leather jackets. The le yes, the yes. Jackets, the yeah, ones. that's yeah, I can't true. remember the name of the the guy that used to make all those jackets. I want, yeah, I want the, a I want an AC Delco one. Okay. AC Delco? Yeah, those ones. I, I just like the branding of that. Like, that car is so clean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I always liked that one. You drove the, yours was the two, right? Mine was the two. But then but then Junior drove the three. Yeah. His jackets are probably worth more than mine. That's why I'm going to get yours, because it's oh. cheaper. Cheaper. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> he thinks you need to sign it. I mean, I do, you do I have to sign it. Yeah. Oh, he's I mean, saying it, no. If you're going to wear it, I wouldn't sign it for now. <laughs> There's a fake signature on it somewhere. See? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's on there, embroidered it's on sewn there. in. I think it's Solid, cool. sewn in. Back when they used to sew things. <laughs> right, sewing machine. Okay. So is that vintage? It is yeah. technically vintage. How many years is vintage? Tech, uh, uh, in car in car culture, I think it's 20 years. 20 years, so it's vintage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but yeah. That's yeah. a minor Your GM, Anything that has GM Goodwrench on it for you is definitely vintage. I thought it was cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's worth more that way. All right, so we're talking about Martinsville, the next track we're going to. I want to know some specifics about it. What makes it so tough? Like you mentioned, it's a place everyone kind of wants to win at, but it is hard to win there. You it really got to put it together. And, and a lot of times it's you against everybody else, and and you just have to keep yourself from getting torn up. And, <laughs> and there's just so many things that can go wrong. You can get a fender knocked in. You can get the radiator knocked in. Harder to do with, with these cars, but it's just a, it's a very... Uh, you have to be very precise at Martinsville to put the car in the right spot. And you have to have a great handling car, which are two hard things to to do at Martinsville to put the car in the right spot every lap. There's guys that are really good at it. It's a, it's a, for, for me, it's a, the way that I drove with the mid corner speed, wanting to um, be partial throttle and do the things that I did in the middle of the corner. It just was never a good place for, for me to do that. And the way that I drove, I'd always be fast through the middle third of the corner and run into the back of somebody or gain my time there, and I could never pass on entry or exit. So uh, the style that I had just didn't fit there. Some guys are like that. Some guys aren't. Some guys, it, it fits really well. I always wanted to run right next to the curb. I feel like there's like a like a six or eight inch clean strip of concrete down there, and if you can wrap your tire right around that that concrete, and there's a little crack right next to the curb, uh, between the curb and the, and the actual concrete that you would want to wrap but if the if the rubber builds up you're either going to want to run right down there or you're going to want to split the rubber and diamond diamond the corner so it's a it's a great racetrack it's fun to watch i'm glad i get to watch this year never never somewhere that i really actually enjoyed driving <laughs> because i knew how bad i was there oh well what do you think about this weekend what are you uh, looking forward to for the paper clip as we call it? yeah the paper clip um then the hot dogs Oh, yeah. You gotta get a dog. Have you eaten one of those? I've never had a hot dog. Are you kidding you gotta, you me? Gotta, oh, we got to send somebody up to the booth. I just don't understand. Have you had one? I have. Yeah, I what do they put on them? All, well, it's I just evolved never, over the years. I never could get past the fact that they were pink. I, yes, that I'm is I'm not saying a eat a bunch Wait, of them. Who said you ate hot dogs in your bus? I can't believe you yeah, did. I don't eat pink hot dogs. <laughs> we I don't need know. to have you deliver something. something that doesn't look right about pink hot dog. Okay, well, we're going to bring you so one. What comes on the hot dogs? I, I don't know. It's like a, Have you had one? Yeah. Slaw I don't get like it. How do you know, not thing? know what comes on it? Because I don't, I don't get it track style. You get style it plain? Or, track style? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's called, uh, <laughs> I don't know, Martin style or something Martin like that. Of, yeah. What does that consist of? I don't know. It's like, it's kind of like in and out You can't say you know all about these things. I didn't know. know anything. It's like I said chili, I ate coleslaw, one before. Something. What'd you have one before? What'd you have on yours? It was like a chili and a coleslaw. See, Mixture I don't like coleslaw. You can get it plain and you put ketchup on it and mustard, just like you like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's oh. right. You got you. He went. We had to go. <laughs> I was like, how did he hey, know he this? He had to go to the snack bar this weekend. We went to Dominion, and I'm like, <laughs> I got there, and I was just wanted to hang out with Keelan. And next thing I knew, everybody knew where I was at. So I told I told Mamba, I'm like, hey man, would you go to the snack bar? Because oh, you I were just, getting mobbed. I don't want to go to the snack bar because I might not ever make it back. It, this is the price you pay being. And he said, "All right, what do you what do you want?" So I, I had a walking taco, <laughs> oh, out of a Fritos bag and a <laughs> and a hot dog with ketchup wow. and mustard on it, and it came back perfect. Everything was yeah. pretty good. Uh, He's him. Good. He is. He's him. him. Yeah, but well, the hot dog was not pink. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, but back to Martinsville. I'm excited because people always get so mad. Yeah. They Everybody's do. mad. They're so mad. Temper we need slide. to make a list of everybody. Who's I know mad. they've been this year. They've been Madless. really chippy. Yeah. They have and, been chippy. Like, this is a place to repay somebody. Like, if you see the eight having a bad day and the 20s around them, mm. this is probably one of those places. <laughs> yeah. And Can't and wait. even this week, like, when the when the five went past the 20, 
he squeezed him up in the fence yeah, and the yeah. 20 had to lift. Had to lift. And, and those are the types of things that you don't typically see. But Clint pointed that out this week. He's like, do you see that? And I went back and watched it. We have a camera that'll, that'll play replays. And that's, that's where we saw the, the true X and, and Joe Gibbs footage there at the end. But, um, the five, the five just, I mean, he just two. kept coming up and 20 was like, uh, I know what this is for. <laughs> That's funny. Well, it's it's going to be entertaining. Martinsville always delivers in a big way. Yep. And time now, though, for you to do your oh, new name. Man. Tell us the new name of Listen, your segment. The new name for the social segment is Mamba Social Sips. Love it. And I got my go. social, sips. social sips of water over here. Ooh. Let me see your cup. He's got a Kevin like cup. Got, yeah. Oh, so this cute. One, yeah. I, yeah. Kevin. I like it. Look at it. It's pretty good. This, it's sharp. I'm a lefty, so they put a. Are you? Are you? <gasps> No, just what I, I had to pick it up with my left hand. Oh. I'm a righty, but we I, mean, I don't know. Shocked. Like, We're like, I mean, what? <laughs> how would I pick up my cup if it was on the, on the, Listen. I'm picking it up with my left hand. Completely fair. I just thought you and We're Tony were both things about him. Yeah. He didn't even know he was a Sagittarius. Yeah. Well, he, doesn't know, he doesn't even know how to, let alone spell it. He doesn't know what it is. Mm, I had fine. no idea. Uh, <laughs> but it's Mamba Social Sips. We're in it. And we couldn't do this one without talking about Joey Gase. <laughs> Joey Gase is such a nice guy. Yes. Right, he's just out here grinding, just trying to get through. And he gets wrecked by Dawson Cram over in three and four, it looks like, and takes his bumper off here, which says, um, I think it says, like, take a bite out of crime. Ooh. And then he, yeah. And then he <laughs> he performed a little bit of a crime. It race does against say crime. race against race crime. against crime. There it is. Mm. So, you know, Joey, I feel for you, my man. I know you guys are just trying to build your stuff, but thank you for the clip. This clip was on FS1 shows. It was on every sports show I bet uh, recap it was. over the weekend not advised for any local short track racer to walk across the racetrack like that we're in a much uh <laughs> different environment there but I, I think he was going for the back bumper in the side window what do you yeah, think I, I think if you get it stuck in there he has to come down it's yeah, yeah. you know Daddy, i would say he, yeah. I would, daddy's getting him dad upset. says, yeah, <laughs> dad says dad says he should probably get a fine because oh. I, I just the guy's walking on the racetrack like that man it just We've seen we've seen a number of instances where where people get hurt and run over and mm -hmm. what if he fell and so okay fell in front of the car right. or something. I'm not I'm not opposed to this, but are you saying he should get a fine because he walked across a track or because he threw the stuff at him? Just walking on a track. Okay. I don't think he should walk across a hot track anywhere. I, I, I just I don't I think we've we've seen enough problems with things happening. Look, I'm all for him pushing and shoving and banging yeah. into each other and creating excitement and saying everything. I wanna I wanna see all that. Mm -hmm. I, I've I've lived all that. But just the the walking across the track stuff, I don't know. So There's just for um, all you for all you cars I'm the, I'm tour, the downer. Yeah, wah, wah, wah. Kevin's all you not into that sip. For all you <laughs> yeah, for all you yeah. cars tour drivers, make sure you don't do that because yeah. Uncle Kev is. Uh, hey, we we've, we've fined a number of them last year for for running across the track or walking across the track. So yeah, you do that in a car tour, you're going to get a penalty. Uncle Kev Bob. Sorry, Uncle Kev Bob. Kev Bob. I'm the Kev downer. Bob. We also we talked about it a little bit, but we went to uh, we went to watch Keelan race at Dominion uh, Speedway over the weekend. Support your local short tracks. Yes. Uh, it's always cool when we're in market. There's a picture Aww. of uh, Keelan and Kevin. You know the cool thing about this is there was no photo cred when it was posted, and I don't know who took it, but he did a really good job. Whoever took this photo. So I, I read that, that you were looking for some credit for the photo, but it was my phone. The, I took the picture. Wait, <laughs> is that how it works? that's not how that works at all. You need to understand <laughs> so what photo credit is. So if you take is. a picture with my phone, so that's like a, that's like a, I guess that's like a, is that like a squatter coming into your house and taking over? Do they own your house? <laughs> no, you just say, it's just like a yeah. little thank you for taking the picture. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> did you guys have phone, fun though? though? You guys rode up together? Yeah. We talked about that? a lot of stuff. I heard. We yeah. did. We had a good time. I'd never been, uh, I'd been to Dominion, but never actually inside the Oval. We've been to the road course there. And I, I don't typically, you know, Keelan, we've tried to schedule his races somewhere around closer to where we are racing to be able to do that. Yeah. And uh, Mamba was was around and was able to go with me. So we we had a good time. Uh, Keelan's first time there as well. Smashed the smashed the bumper so hard that he couldn't steer anymore. Oh. He, he learned it's a very different style of racing, which is why we go to different racetracks. Uh, but he learned that smashing into the back of the people is detrimental at, at Dominion Speedway because yeah, when you're going to. 105 miles they an hour, they strolling around they, there. They cave in pretty easily. So yeah. Uh, when, when they cave in too far, you can't steer anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of how we ended the race. So, yeah. but you know, sounds like a fun It was weekend. fun. They had a great crowd. Yeah. It was nice. packed out. It was yeah, packed out. Had a great crowd. Very cool. Chase Briscoe was out there too, actually. He showed up. So that's Was cool. he getting mobbed like Kevin was? 
Well, he was on the side of the mob, so yeah. 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 Well, I wasn't getting mobbed. I was I was just I was I was there and and it was just it was just you're, one of those situations where I didn't want to go to the snack bar. I just didn't want to go Understood. to the snack bar. Understood. There, there was, the thing was is I'm on the front stretch in his defense, they were doing an autograph session for all the drivers. So had he walked over there, there were a lot the, of yeah, there was a lot of traffic. people and they would have started traffic. coming. Oh, well, right. it would have pulled I wouldn't have been able to carry all the food back. That's fair. I couldn't even carry all the food back. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's time now for our last call, and we're going to give our picks on who we think can get it done in Martinsville this weekend. I guess I'll go first. I wonder if <laughs> Oh, now you want to go first. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now she wants to go first because she's been getting beat. Yeah. Well, we both got beat last week. Yeah. We both had the same pick. Don't look over here. Uh, all right. I'm going with Joey Logano. Oh, really? Are well, we really? are definitely not on the same How many times has he won at Martinsville? He has won there. He also has 11 top fives in yeah. case anyone's coming. He's counting. run well there. Okay. I expect Thank him you. to I expect him to race. <laughs> I expect him to race in the front again this week okay. as well as it ran last week. I can't wait. Week. I hope he yeah. wins. So wait, 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 what do you got? Yeah, Kevin. I'm going to stick with the old horse. I'm going to stick with the 11. Okay. That's I, a good I, pick. I had the 11 and the 5 on my list, so I, I just think that, that these guys are on a roll right now. The redemption pick could be could be the 19. I think he gets yelled at this week a little bit yeah. and, and comes back with a with his with a fury. Yeah. The what eleven. I, I feel like I'm starting to think that we should cap how many times you can pick one car. Okay. That's fine too. You're like four in. We're like seven races in. He's picked the eleven four times. All right. Well, who you got? Uh, who so here's my problem. <laughs> Just like I've told you before, every time I pick somebody, they don't do well. I feel like they I'm jinxing care. them. Mm. Um I'm going with That's their problem. I know. I'm, <laughs> I, I feel like the twelve, they yeah. need. Yeah, they need a little bit of a, a a really strong run. Obviously, they were really strong here in the fall to go to the you know give themselves a chance at the championship. I don't see that changing. Um, I think the twelve. I think Blaney gets it done. I think I think both of those picks are good picks because I think from the arrow side of it, it's the mm-hmm. least amount of arrow that you're going <laughs> to yeah. see. So I think it's the Ford's best chance that we've currently had outside of Daytona and Atlanta. Um, so Blaney, I mean Blaney's run well there. He's had a lot of speed there too. Mm. Uh, he did not have a lot of speed at Richmond. He yeah. ran in the back. Yeah, his high. I think he got up to like twelfth, and then something happened, and it was just. I back. must have had my eyes closed. You were not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I was watching the twelfth. Okay. Yeah. Kevin approves of our picks, which is. Good. You feel though that you I think feel like he approves of these. Choices. Yeah, I go with the yeah, easy picks. Sure. So he, he, I just. It's fine. Gibbs cars we'll are going to be tough to beat. Do. Of course, <laughs> they're always tough to beat. See. Always tough I'm to gonna beat. I'm going to stick with my saying. There you go. <laughs> Gibbs cars are going to be tough to beat. <laughs> He's never wrong because he always never does wrong. it. got four choices. Uh, well, six, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So we have been asking the fans and the listeners to submit names for what our yeah. groupies are they? No, <laughs> no, oh, not wow. groupies. I don't. That's not good. We have groupies. No, we don't. You do. Yeah. We. Oh, um, yeah. But <laughs> what's what's our new name? What have we so, come up with? Ladies and gentlemen, we have been listening to you for weeks. You've been giving your five star reviews, much appreciated, and we have decided. That you are the closers Love it. of the Harvick Happy Hour podcast. There you go. Mm. We that appreciate is a, you. A nod to Kevin's long term nickname. Well, closer. I think that's a good choice. Did I you think of too. that yourself? No. Somebody, a no. fans thought no. of it. I Actually, I think Bob Bob Pockers. Pockers. Bob yeah. Pockers. Remember, we were walking out that day and Bob was like, Oh, Bobby P. Yeah. Thank you, my friend. Well, he listens to, to every I'm episode. Glad to, I'm glad some of those old time things stick around. That's right. What hey, do call, they do. It's called yeah, being right. vintage, Kevin. It's called being vintage. Vintage. Uh, vintage sayings. Vintage unlike sayings. A, unlike a whatever, lit. He's he's him. <laughs> we'll have to see. What, what was the one before that? Dog in him. Yeah, you got the dog in him. Got, got that, that dog, dog in him. him. Yeah. Uh, real quick, before Buffle. before we get yeah, <laughs> that's one. Of, Buffle. That's, that's a squire one. So that doesn't, that's old. That's old. That's timeless too. Okay. Um, I want to make a bet with you guys real quick. Okay. Okay. Last year we had eleven cup races affected by rain. How many? We're at, we're at three now. Over or under eleven this year. I think it'll be under. I hope under. under. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you know the great part about it is for me, once we get to June 9th, I don't really give a <laughs> yeah. crap anymore. My work is done here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So if it's over, then you owe dinner at Steak Forty Eight. Ooh, I, I if like it's this over. Bet. Yeah, I'm but taking the over. He's trying to get a free dinner now. <laughs> Classic. Duh, like, what do you mean? There, yeah. We knew there had to be more deal. to this bet. Deal. You got a deal. Okay. 
All right. We'll have to see how it all unfolds. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, follow on X, Instagram, uh, Facebook, everywhere you get your podcasts. Harvick, happy pod. And we'll see you after Martinsville.